Beneath the surface of Australia lies a story written in ancient stone, sculpted by water, fire and time. In this video we uncover three more of the continent's most fascinating geological wonders. First we descend into the mysterious depths of the Janolan Caves, a hidden world of twisted limestone chambers that may be among the oldest cave systems on the planet. Then we travel to the Pinnacles Desert where thousands of bizarre limestone spires rise from the sand like the ruins of a lost civilization. Finally, we scale the surreal peaks of the Glasshouse Mountains, volcanic plugs left behind by a vanished firestorm millions of years ago. These formations aren't just stunning, they're geological time capsules. And in this episode, we crack them open to reveal the ancient forces that shaped them. The Janolan Caves in New South Wales Deep in the Blue Mountains west of Sydney, lies an underground wonderland that reveals the slow poetry of water in stone, the Janolan Caves. Hidden beneath a forested valley, this extensive karst cave system twists and turns for over 40 kilometers, with subterranean rivers, cathedral-like chambers, and a sparkling array of limestone formations. Stalactites hang from the ceilings like stone icicles. Stalagmites build from the floors, sometimes meeting to form columns. Delicate crystal shawls and flowstones drape the walls, their pure white calcite turning gold under flashlight beams. The atmosphere is cool and hushed, broken only by the occasional drip of water, the very same force that built these caves drop by drop. Janolan is often hailed as the oldest known open cave system in the world, and indeed it is incredibly ancient. When you descend into its depths, you are effectively stepping into a realm that began forming hundreds of millions of years ago. Geologically, Janolan Caves owe their existence to a combination of very hard rock and very persistent water. The story begins around 430 million years ago, during the Silurian period, when the limestone here first formed as a coral reef or marine sediment in a shallow sea. That limestone, rich in marine fossils like ancient corals, brachiopods and other sea life, was later uplifted as part of the Great Dividing Range. Over eons the once horizontal layers of limestone were tilted, fractured and exposed to the elements. Crucially, limestone is soluble in slightly acidic water. Fast forward to the past few million years, rainwater seeped down through cracks in the rock, enriched by carbon dioxide from the soil to form a weak carbonic acid. Following these cracks and joints, the water slowly dissolved the limestone, enlarging hairline fractures into tunnels and caverns. Janolan's network of caves likely went through multiple phases of formation, some passages forming, then filling with sediment, then being re-excavated by new water flows. In fact, researchers using radiometric dating on cave clays have determined that parts of the Janolan system are about 340 million years old, making it the oldest dated cave system so far. This astonishing age suggests that some cavities survived virtually intact since the late Carboniferous period, even as surface landscapes above were worn away. Over such a long span, the caves didn't remain static. Water continued to flow and reroute, carving new chambers and abandoning old ones. The subterranean Janolan River still courses through some sections, continuing the work of dissolution in real time. Meanwhile in the dry upper levels, formation growth takes centre stage. Every stalactite and stalagmite in Janolan grew from mineral rich water dripping or trickling in the dark. As each drop of water evaporated or lost carbon dioxide, it precipitated a tiny ring of calcite. Multiply that by millions of drops over tens of thousands of years, and grand formations result. Some of Janolan's most famous features, the shimmering ribbon stalactites, the massive flowstone called minaret, or the eerily translucent shores in the Temple of Bull Cave, are the product of this slow decoration process. Geologically, they are evidence that the cave has remained stable for a very long time to allow such features to grow. Janolan caves thus represent a double marvel. They showcase one of the earliest chapters of cave development on Earth, and at the same time, they actively demonstrate ongoing geological processes. Walking through its chambers, one traverses an underworld that has outlasted mountains and oceans, where water and rock continue their ageless dance, sculpting ever so slowly the hidden contours of the Earth. The Pinnacles in Western Australia Rising from the golden sands of the Nambung National Park, the Pinnacles Desert is an eerie expanse dotted with thousands of limestone pillars. These jagged spires range from knee-high stubs to 5 metre monoliths, 
casting long shadows across rippling dunes. Their shapes are fantastically varied, some are sharp and conical, others mushroom-like or stubby with rounded tops, creating an almost alien forest of rock amid an otherwise barren landscape. As the desert winds continually shift the sands, the pinnacles appear and disappear with time. Local lore even recalls a time when they were completely buried, only to be gradually re-exposed by the migrating dunes. Walking among these silent sentinels feels like stepping into a prehistoric sculpture garden, their surfaces etched by weathering and embedded with seashell fragments that hint at their origin. Belying their otherworldly appearance, the pinnacles are a product of very earthly processes, though geologists still debate the exact sequence of events that created them. Their story began roughly 500,000 years ago, when this area was a shallow coastal sea teeming with marine life. As the sea retreated about 25,000 years ago, it left behind masses of seashells that broke down into calcium-rich sand. These lime sands blew inland into dunes, eventually hardening into a rock layer known as the Tamala limestone. The pinnacles themselves formed within this limestone and were later exposed by erosion. Exactly how they formed is an ongoing mystery. Scientists have proposed several ingenious theories. One idea is that acidic rainwater dissolved the limestone into vertical hollows, solution pipes, and the remaining hardened material stands as the pillars we see. Another theory suggests the pillars might have begun as casts around the roots of ancient plants or trees that were cemented by minerals, then unveiled by wind erosion long after the organic matter vanished. A more recent proposal even points to microorganisms, suggesting that microbes help cement the sand into these columns. In all scenarios, the key is that the limestone pillars proved more resistant than the surrounding sand, which was gradually eroded away by wind and water. Today, the pinnacles endure as remnants of this complex interplay of marine deposition, groundwater cementation, and wind erosion, a process hundreds of thousands of years in the making. Standing amid them, one can't help but marvel at how time and chemistry conspired to turn an ancient seabed into a surreal desert gallery. The Glasshouse Mountains in Queensland Jutting abruptly from Queensland's Sunshine Coast hinterland, the Glasshouse Mountains are a collection of craggy domes and spires that rise above the surrounding forests and fields. There are 13 main peaks, each with its own shape and character. These mountains have a striking isolated appearance. Steep-sided and nearly bare of vegetation on their upper slopes, they dominate the flat coastal plain like sentinels. The unusual name comes from history. When Captain James Cook sailed up Australia's east coast in 1770, he thought these peaks looked like the huge glass furnaces or glass houses of his native Yorkshire, and thus dubbed them the Glasshouse Mountains. There is a familial similarity to the summits. All are made of the same greyish rock, and many exhibit sheer cliffs or vertical columnar structures on their flanks. The Glasshouse Mountains have long been sacred to the indigenous people, and today are popular with hikers and sightseers, offering panoramic views from their summits. But to geologists, these peaks are of special interest as windows into Australia's volcanic past. Unlike most mountains which form from uplifted crust or accumulated layers, the Glasshouse Mountains are actually the solidified cores of ancient volcanoes. Their story began about 25 million years ago, in the late Oligocene to early Miocene, when this part of Australia was geologically active. At that time, the Australian continent was drifting northward over a hotspot, a plume of magma rising from deep in the Earth's mantle. As the continental crust passed over this hotspot, volcanoes erupted through the overlying rocks, much like a blowtorch burning holes through a moving sheet. Dozens of small volcanoes would have dotted southeast Queensland's landscape. Then, around 26 to 27 million years ago, a different phase of activity occurred. Molten magma began pushing its way upward more slowly, intruding into the crust without completely breaking through as a lava flow or eruption. These intrusions formed dome-shaped plugs and lacoliths beneath the surface, essentially reservoirs of magma that cooled and crystallized underground. The Glasshouse Mountains are the solidified remains of these magma plugs. Over the millions of years that followed, all the surrounding material, the volcano's outer cones and the softer sedimentary rocks of the region eroded away, leaving only the hard igneous cores behind. What we see now are those resistant cores, standing high as the landscape's softer parts have been worn down to a plain. The rock composing the peaks is mostly rhyolite and trachyte, hard volcanic rocks that cooled slowly enough to form columns and vertical jointing. For example, Mount Kudarin displays striking organ pipe columns, 
a clue that they cooled from a molten state in place. Geologically speaking, each mountain is like the exposed heart of an extinct volcano. As rainfall, wind and time peeled away layer after layer of overlying rock, the bones of these volcanoes emerged. This process has produced the dramatic contrast we see today. Lush subtropical lowlands punctuated by bare rocky mounts. The Glasshouse Mountains thus stand as time capsules of Australia's fiery origins. Their bold shapes forever frozen reminders of volcanoes that raged here long before humans walked these lands. Australia's landscapes are more than just breathtaking. They are windows into Earth's ancient past. From the dripping limestone cathedrals of Janolan Caves to the eerie desert spires of the Pinnacles and the volcanic monuments of the Glasshouse Mountains, these formations reveal a continent shaped by unimaginable forces over millions of years. Each location tells a different chapter of the planet's story. One written in coral reefs turned to stone, lava frozen in place, and rainwater carving caverns through bedrock. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.